So now as my last official act, I'd like to call upon our first vice chair, Steve DeVoe, to introduce our wonderful, amazing build chair for 2013, 2014, Steve Upton. So Steve, thank you everyone. Listen to the music. So the last three people up to the podium got a uh, standing ovation, so I'll wait for mine until, <laughs> until I'm done. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's my pleasure tonight to formally introduce our 2012-2013 chair, Steve Upton. I'm not going to give too much away because I know Steve is going to tell you a bit about himself in just a moment or two. I will say that Steve is invaluable to our industry, and as the title of his address so appropriately states, he's going to help us make our mark this year and in the coming years. Steve has been around this industry for more than four decades, and I'm not telling you this to make him sound ancient or to bring to light to the fact that he's been in the industry longer than I've been on the planet. Um, that's cute. I thought that was harmless. <laughs> but in all honesty, Steve, is, Steve has always been a mentor of mine. There is absolutely nobody that works City Hall's ground and second floor like Steve Upton. He's the absolute best at what he does. His insight and wisdom will serve us well, and I know that he wants to take the lead from his predecessor, Paul Gallini, and position the board and the executive and the association as, influ as influential thought leaders among our stakeholders, our partners, and the general public. And if anyone can do it, it's Steve Upton. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please join me in welcoming our 2012-13 chair to the podium, Mr. Steve Upton. I don't know how to match that one, that's for sure. Before I even make any remarks, going back to Mr. Gallini. Sorry, Paul. I took a little strip from yourself, my friend. A little polished up. Now, two things go on, hopefully after tonight. I was amongst the tall guys, okay? Paul, Alan Vihant, Stephen Dupuy, now Brian Tucky. I felt like it was the land of the giants. And all the hair they had to as well. Now, mind you, I still got mine, but not as wavy, not as dreamy Galini as Paul is. <laughs> However, <laughs> anyways, Paul, that's, a, that's one you're going to have to walk away with. They should have put it on your caricature. In any event, it's, uh, it's great to be here tonight. It's my pleasure tonight to, f to whoops, they gave me the wrong one. Nice way to start off. I want to thank Steve DeVoe for the kind words. Steve and I have been friends for quite some time. Uh, we've collaborated quite closely together with Leona Savoie, the co-chair of the Toronto chapter, and uh, if anybody had to say remarks, uh, open remarks for me, it was a great choice. So thank you very much, Steve, much appreciated. And yeah, four decades, but what the hell, you know? I still look pretty young, I think. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Anyways, I'm, I'm humbled to be a following in the footsteps of the past presidents and or chairs who are with us tonight as well as the ones who couldn't be here. And it's a testimony to my left, uh, the, the characters and the experience that's, that's come to uh, the organizations of the Toronto Home Builders, the Greater Toronto Home Builders, uh, UDI, ultimately BUILD, that's uh, led this association to where it is today. I got some pretty big shoes to fill. Uh, I come with a lot of energy. I think I'm focused. I'm not trying to sell myself to the job, I just know that I can stand up and be counted for it, and I've got to do it because my predecessors are going to look at me pretty darn close. So, uh, and, and I know Bob Finnegan's going to make damn sure I do. So, uh, apparently I'm the 79th uh, leader of this association. Close to my age, maybe? I don't know. But I want to take this opportunity to thank all my predecessors again, and the volunteers, their time and energy to this industry when they were called upon, because it's, it, it takes up a lot of your time. I'm following me in the footsteps of Paul Gallini, as I said, who has faced his term's challenges with integrity, strength, and leadership. Uh, that is uh, what I hope to carry on as your next chair. I hope not to have the same challenges Paul had to face with what happened with Stephen, but I'll tell you something, uh, it was the right choice to have Paul in the house when that happened, and uh, I accolade Brian on that one. To start off the year right, I want to take a moment to introduce the Build Board of Directors to you. 
when I call your name, I ask the audience, please don't, don't clap just yet. Leave it until they're all standing up, because there are a few, because this is the only association that has an army of people on the board. So when I call your name, please stand so everyone can see you. In particular, on our executive committee, immediate past chair, Paul Galini of Empire Communities. Paul, please stand. The first vice chair, Steve DeVoe, Tribute Communities, Steve. Second vice chair, Gary Gregoris, Mattamy Holmes. Secretary, Leora Margulies, Robbins, Appleby, and Tobe. Treasurer, Howard Friedman of Travelers Canada. Howard couldn't be here this evening, he's actually traveling out west. We have Brendan Charters, Eurodale Developments, our rental group. Um, Bruce Redicek, Darren Steedman of Metris Developments, Inc. Alan Vihant, Great Golf Homes. And the remainder of our board, this is your executive committee, and the remainder of our board, I'd like to introduce to you, to you Aresh Behesti of Concord ADEX, Bose Finer of Geranium Corporation, Marco Felice, Liberty Development Corporation, Michael Kraljevic of Build Toronto, Sheldon Lipfeld, Conservatory Group, Sheldon can be here, he's basking in the Florida sun, Craig Marshall, Marshall Homes, Cheryl Shindrick, Geranium Homes, who also can be with us, she's traveling in India tonight, Blair Wilk, Orlando Corporation, Kenzie Campbell, Royal Home Improvements, Lefteris Garinatis, Maine Construction Group Inc., Ken Murphy, RBC Royal Bank, Mary Harnick, Enbridge Gas Distribution, Johnny Guglietti, Tamarick Lumbering, Laura Sandler, Olympia Tile and Stone, Leo Steffler, Hanson Brick, Enza Checha, T. Carenza, David Klusberg, LA Inc., Susan Legg, New Homes and Condo Guide. None other than Cindy Lloyd from the Toronto Star. Frank Magliocco from PricewaterhouseCooper. George D. Petey from North Group, sorry, North Rock Group Limited. And Adriano Tari from North York Tile Contractors. And two other people I'd ask to stand would be uh, Leona Savoy from Hallmark Corporation, as well as Lino Pelicano from Green Park. These two people are board members at large that I'd like to recognize uh, this evening. So please, ladies and gentlemen, please, round of applause. As I say, we do have a very large board, but everyone does find a way in which we can interact and, and work together. And hopefully with my leadership, we'll, we'll stay focused and, uh, and go forward with our mandate. I stand here this evening with the endorsement of the executive, the board of directors, and of course my team at Tridel, and most importantly, my family. What's important uh, for my team from Tridel is that I don't think they realized that my life was going to be taken away from them for a two-year period. We talked about it being off and on, off and on, but there is a lot of work to be done to build. But I'm the kind of person that knows how to balance. I'm, I'm the kind of person that uh, takes on a lot. I'm the kind of person that knows how to balance it all out, and um, at the end of the day, I'll be working very hard for both the BUILD organization and the Tridel organization, just to reassure you, Angelo, Leo, and Alvio, and Harvey. <laughs> and I realize that some of the people in the audience tonight uh, might not know me as well as others do, and uh, uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. When I, when I graduated from school, um, trying to focus in on employment was kind of unique back then, and I is when you say four decades of uh, working in industry, I, I was rather, rather young when I got out of school and uh, I ended up working in the government. And it was then known, ironically, as the borough of North York, which we all know today as the good old city of Toronto. And I was there for about five years working on subdivision plans and development plans and, and zoning bylaws in particular. And after five years, my whole goal was, I don't really want to spend five years in one place. So I had the luxury of uh, being introduced to Alvio Delzato at that time through his firm. And uh, through that, I was able to uh, uh, land a job with them that gave me the opportunity to not just uh, work on their planning files for their clients in the firm, but also to uh, work as a paralegal, which they helped me go through school for, ironically, and, and, and really work on Tridel work. I have to say, my claim to fame, if there's anything, Elvio, is the fact that I probably worked on every condominium that Tridel ever decided to build and sell. And if that's the case, which I believe it is, going back to 1970, that's uh, uh, an honor. And so uh, we put a lot of energy into it, but I got the experience from that. And today, uh, starting in 82, going forward till today, uh, I helped them start up their development department because 
A big company doesn't need to hire all its services out, it needed to control its own destiny. So with the help of my two former associates uh, and myself, we got the luxury of starting up Tridel's first development group and it functions to this day and I have a staff of about eight, nine people here, here this evening that are the strength behind uh, the backbone of our development planning process. And, uh, and that's been 30 years of my life to, uh, to formulate that and work for it and maintain the confidence of the company. And 40 years with a family is, is a long time. I understand the business aspects of that. I've been given the luxury of land acquisition to work closely with that. Uh, uh, just to have an input into it has is, is been extraordinary. Understanding the numbers game. And the law part with Elvio has been phenomenal. The planning and governance side with the government and what I do for Tridel at the various city halls and government offices, provincially otherwise, has given me a lot of opportunity to, to bring to build um, some real character in leadership uh, on that side of the coin. And um, there's a few members of the past uh, presidents who know me, they know my background, and uh, I think I come with some really strong credentials that's uh, going to lead this organization over the next two years. I got involved with Build uh, back in, in about, oh, I think it was about 2003, because uh, Jim Ritchie, our senior vice president at Tridell, said that he didn't have the time to get really heavily involved in the GTHBA, but maybe I can get involved in the economy side and then see where it goes. Well, ironically, it just moved into the next sector when UDI and Bill decided to merge. And when they merged, we ended up, um, uh, uh, Neil Rogers ended up really pushing me pretty hard at one of Andy's deals at Toronto Star, where we do the breakfast club at Christmas, saying, you got to be the first chair of the Toronto chapter under Bill. And um, reluctantly at the time, I took it on, but it became a real reward because my goal in life is that I do not want to take on a task unless I can influence that task. And the influence has to be great in communication between government and build. If I could do that with the City of Toronto, then yes, I'll do that. And I think I did accomplish that. And in accomplishing it, when I did step down from being chapter chair, I was able to give to two people who are really running it today at a top-notch level. And, and, and to that end, uh, uh, Leith Moore said, well, you can't get off that easy. And you know Leith, he's a delegator, he's a streamer, he's a leader big time, and uh, he said, you're not getting off easy. I want you on my board, and I also want you on the exec committee. So I had the luxury of saying, okay, I can do that. And in doing that, I became uh, very close to Gary Gagoris, Alan Vyant, Brian McCauley, as well as executive members at large. We watched all the things going on, and we started playing a big role in it. And as you know, Leith Moore, any of you, you know, he's, he's, he can talk to you just about everything. And I'll talk to you later about last week, Leith. Okay, but anyways, long of the short is, um, I took it on and thought this was a good opportunity for me to learn a lot more about Build in, a, in an executive capacity. Uh, Stephen Dupuy, God bless his soul, he was the guy who took me out to lunch finally after Paul and, and, uh, and Leith couldn't convince me to become first vice chair under Paul because I just didn't think I was ready for it because there was other people ahead of me like Alan Byant and others that I thought were leaders in their communities too as well and why not. But Stephen Dupuy, you know what he was like, you go to Auberge Premier, a few glasses of wine and you'll do anything within reason. <laughs> but, but Stephen was a real mentor and he was a hard guy to, to turn around and say, no, I, I can't do that. So with that, I said, yes, I'll take the challenge on. I'll become first vice chair. God knows what's going to come out of that at the end of the day. Well, Paul attested to it. I, I, I watched your back as best I could. I, I had some uh, real issues going on in my life, and, uh, but I think everybody came to my support. And as a result of it, I was able to get back faster. And by getting back faster, I was able to get you out of the realm and take on more responsibility to make your life a lot easier, Paul. And I, and I think I accomplished that. And that was part of where, if I'm going to make a statement about what I learned in the last two years at Build was the character of people that would stand behind you at the best of times and the worst of times. And, and also people that really would look at you and say, hey, you can create leadership here. You can be a part of a, a big organization, lead them, and, and take them into where they need to be at the end of the day. Because we're really running into some really complex issues. We're a complex machine. We're a complex organization. The world is not easy. And I'm walking into a hornet's nest. But I'm walking in with my eyes wide open, and I believe that I can make the difference. And uh, you as an association members, I look at you as making the, dish, uh, the, the uh, difference with me. Um, the, term, the term I'm going to use during my, my last few remarks here is that when Paul went forward with being champions of the cause and, and, and being champions to tell the story, I, I, I believe my comment is uh, we, we're making our mark. And Steve alluded to it in his comments about me because both Steve and I and Gary Gagoris have set a, a plan for the next five years of where we think we need to be with this organization. And as a result, making our mark is probably the most important thing we can do right now for a whole slew of reasons. 
This is not just now. This is over a six-year period when Steve and, and Gary will take away from me and others uh, the next step as uh, chair and, and represent you. We have a strategic plan that sets out how BUILD will enhance health and reputation of our industry. And, and, and this is through government relations, environmental stewardship, education, which is foremost, marketing, communications, which is paramount, and membership. Membership must be maintained. We're in the 1400 mark of members with the largest organization in, uh, in Canada, uh, over and above all the other uh, housing associations. We're healthy, we're strong, and I think we have to make our mark, simple and sweet. With those in mind, I have three main areas of focus which I'll go into more detail for you. Um, one is continuation of last year's work, work of the past presidents and chairs, of course, being champions of our industry. Challenging the affordability issues. That is so huge right now. It's on the minds of everybody. Our kids are finding it very tough. We're finding it tough as, as developers and builders to, to find out what affordability really truly means. So that's an issue that we have to tackle on and find a way to deal with it. And governance, it's, it's, it's reinforcing government with us. It's not reinventing it. There's nothing to reinvent with government, but reinforcing it. Because right now, with the way the leadership is uh, and the way the government election process will probably take place over the next several months or whatever, uh, you know, this is a time of weakness. This is a time for us to step up the plate as an organization, make our mark with those government officials. And it's not just with the Liberals through Kathleen Wynne, it's, it's through the leadership of the NDP as well as Conservatives, because this is the time if you're going to take advantage of it to do it. Lee started it with, with the Liberal, associate, sorry, Liberal government uh, during his tenure, major, major, major open for business program. We're in a tough time right now, we can't open for business because the government's scrambled, but you know, believe me, making our mark means we're going to be open for business, which means we're going to be ready to go when that starts to turn around. So that's very important. Making our mark, um, Bill is undertaking a, a communication strategy. Uh, Hill and Knowlton has been hired to, to work with us to set our focus on how we tell our story, how we get the message out there, how we deal with our media partners, how we, look, how we are perceived by the public, which has also been a real struggle for us. There was a survey done by them, about 1,700 people were surveyed, and through that process, some of the key issues that these people uh, brought to everyone's attention, I'll give you four examples very quickly. Quality construction, they were concerned about corporate social responsibility. They were concerned about environmental standards and definitely concerned about economic contributions. How does an organization this big hit all those marks? Well, these are things that we do every day. We know that as a group of people, we do this every day. Quality construction, you know, amongst our, our construction people here, we have award-winning projects. Quality design, top-notch technology and construction design. And we continue with our Renamark program, which is, which is immense. So the homeowners know that they're working with professionals who care about the quality of their, of their homes. Charity-wise, we donate to, to um, Habitat for Humanity. Since 2003, we've, we've actually donated half a million dollars into creating homes for, for people who, could, who need them and, and can't afford them and, 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 the, and the whole program of Habitat for Humanity. You all know what it means. And half a million dollars a lot. But on top of all that, a lot of our members in this room, you know, you are the ones that actually have gone out and spent millions of dollars on, your, on, on, on programs helping other uh, associations, uh, needy people, needy organizations, hospitals, community centers, you name it, throughout the GTA. You know, so that story has to be told. So people want to know, well, what do you do? What do you give back to us? Well, you know what we do? We just haven't told it. Now it's time to tell it. Now we have to make our mark. Meeting environmental standards, um, revised, uh, we've been involved in revising the Ontario Building Code. Paul Galini has been very strong on that right from the outset uh, when he became chair of, of BUILD, especially in the green standards area. Uh, LEED is our current uh, tool we work with. It's the one that's out there. But, you know, over the next couple of years, who knows what that's going to be. Things change every time we turn around. Every time we drink water, something's going to change. We have to be in front of it. We have to make sure we've got input into it. Part of making our mark is making sure that we're there in front at all times. The economic contribution that we make as an organization Remember that since 2000, actually in 2011, we had 193,000 jobs in our industry. That's generated like $10 billion in wages. No other organization has that ability. Our industry did. And when you take a look at RealNet numbers released a few weeks ago, our industry sold $18 billion in inventory last year. Think about that in terms of jobs for years to come. That's huge. And we lead that. Build. We're going to make our mark and every one of us is going to help. We've got to be champions of this industry. We've got to tell our story. We're not going to change things overnight, but we will see results. 
In terms of affordability, I think this is very crucial. Um, it may be seen that we're not doing much about it because it is so big, a big an issue, but believe you me, we are, and we're going to be in front of everybody on this, especially government, the provincial government, as well as local municipalities. We have to be very concerned that we don't want them setting policies that we can't live with as an organization, uh, as an industry. We gotta make sure that we're in front to get the right, uh, uh, the right verbiage that we need and the, and, the, and the right ability to create affordability within our products without being mandated. We want to have that opportunity to have that up front. And we've got to look at it in so many different ways. It's, it's the financial part of it all. It's the taxes that we have to pay, you know, with, with the municipalities on DC charges and parkland charges and Section 37s, and it goes on and on and on. So we have to continue to work with our government partners to keep our costs down. That's got to be a goal. At the ta we're at the table right now on DC charges, and I know we hear this every time someone stands at this podium, but it is huge. If you just talk to Gary Gregoris, he'll tell you that, that in Halton, it's a nightmare. When you sit there and figure that soft costs on a house in Halton is $100,000 the door with all the things they throw in and they're not even listening to you, how does a homeowner actually find financing to actually finance that kind of $100,000 tax to them? So those are things we have to be really, really starting to work hard with. And I think we have to take a very close look at Halton, more than we have before, in terms of how Bill can play a role in there with the builders to try and turn that thing around because it'll be like a disease. It'll, it'll feel its way through other areas. So we have to stay at the table. Toronto's gonna to be doing its DC charges very, very shortly. As a matter of fact, they're talking about, and you might as well all know unless you've already heard it, they've already brought us to the table and said, you know what, it doesn't come up until next year, but we're gonna start talking about it right now because by June, we're gonna have a new rate. They need money. So they're already forcing us to the table. And while we had a real good win with the Hempson mythology in Orangeville, which was huge for us, that put money back in the pockets, uh, people are still fighting us on that. Miss Pelley, you say, we don't care. You know, so you won that one. We're going to still argue with you. Well, so our work isn't done. We have to go out and keep plugging away at it. The OMB is still going on with us in terms of Mark and Mississauga Clarington. Those are areas that we're still trying to settle up these DC charges. We did get successful in Aurora and Innisville uh, in settling it up. As a matter of fact, in those communities, we we're actually able to save $1,000 a door, put it back into your pockets as builders, more or less put it back in the homeowner's pocket, which is really an achievement. It needs more. It's not enough. We've got to really do something about this. We're at the table opposing planning, planning fee increases. They, every time you turn around, the municipalities think they need more money and they're not even giving us service for it. So every time we debate the issue about these increased fees, we have to be at the table talking about, well then, how about our service? How do we start dealing with our service? You want more money, we want better service. I can't go to my company and say it's gonna do a performer for a two year program to get zoning through. That's ludicrous. But having said that, that's reality. So if we're gonna get increased fees, we gotta find a way and get better service. So we stay at the table with that. Conservation authority fees are just, countless uh, fees that, that we're paying and it's just, we're not getting the service for it. And parkland policies, that's been a horrendous issue for us all. Um, we're gonna be focused in on that and going forward in the, under our tenure the next two years, we have to do that. And as you can see from all the comments I've been making about a number of the things that are really foremost in our mind, you can see that we're advocating for you and for the homeowner. This actually leads me to my third goal in governance. I talked about reinforcing, not reinventing all the levels of government, and I did talk about liberal government. I met up with Kathleen after she, was, uh, she won her liberal uh, ability to be the Premier of Ontario. I was at a Board of Trade dinner. We had a little chat for a bit, and uh, I asked her just to reinforce me as leader of, 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 of BUILD, that she will do exactly what she said she would do back in December, and that's work with us. Her government worked with us, and I want her to reinforce that. Well, we always know that's a bit of rhetoric from time to time, but I honestly feel that Kathleen really means it, so we're gonna put her to the test. We're gonna see what we come out of this with because we definitely, definitely wanna have her as our, uh, on the side with us. We know a provincial election's dooming over us right now. We're not sure where that's gonna go. That's why I mentioned earlier that we have to be out there in front of the Conservative government and the NDP as well. And the municipal election's not far off too. I mean, that's another one we've gotta face up in 2014. And our role is now, at this point, to think about how we educate uh, the new councils and advocate for our members uh, as they go forward under, under that new election program. You already know that we have a governance team within BUILD. It's a dream team. I call it that because they are. Led by Paula Tenuta, our Vice President, and her team, uh, they do a marvelous job, an actually phenomenal job, in terms of how they manage the governance that's going on in all the various municipalities within the GTA and report back to the Executive Committee and to the, and to the Board of Directors. And sometimes they take a little push on it, but you know what? We're behind them 1,000%. They are the heart and soul and the backbone to our industry, quite frankly. They're the ones keeping us informed of what's going on so we can make the right decisions as we go forward. 
We want, we want to reinforce, not reinvent. At the board level, we've got to narrow the focus of issues going forward. And, and I'm going to make it short and sweet now because I'm getting down to the short strokes of my comments. But what I mean by short, you know, narrowing it down is I really believe that if the executive committee and board can really work with the chapter chairs and with our industry partners, all of you in the room, to say, okay, we're going to narrow it down to whatever number of issues we think it should be. That's it. I want board direction on that. And by having board direction on that, we'll put money towards it. We'll set up the teams to deal with those issues and we'll move on. And then if anything else comes out that's important, we'll deal with it, but we're going to be very pointed on it and we'll be reporting to everybody and that's the way we're going to do business. We don't want to be trying to be all over the place like a, like a map. We just got to really be focused on the very strong key issues. And as a unified board, we'll make the, the right decisions and get out in front of all the issues. And uh, we'll have the success that you've had in the past and we can do more when we, as I say, make our mark. My final thoughts, quite frankly, are, are, are kind of different. But, you know, it may sound a little corny to you, but John F. Kennedy said at one time, I think you all know what he said, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. I would look at you in this room where the energy is, where the manpower is, the ideas, the creativity is. I look at you and I say, don't ask what Bill can do for you. You've already done that. I'm now going to ask you to tell you what can you do for Bill. I want to tap into your energy. I want to knock on your door. I want to find out if you agree with what we're doing or not doing. I want to get an understanding of what the issues are that you think they are. And then let us have a real more broad scope of what really we should be focusing on. And I think that that will go a long ways. I need everyone in the room to use your membership to its fullest. I'm going to use mine and I'll need advice from you to be able to carry forward what I must do as chair of Bill. We need to work together just like we do, like we do when we build our homes use all our disciplines in this industry to find the best solution, make the best decisions, and build the best we can. That's how we're going to, quote, make our mark. And I'm looking forward to meeting all of you, and most of you I'm looking forward to working very closely with. To that end, I thank you for listening to me as I've rambled on, and I'm looking forward to being your chair of BUILD going forward in 2013-2014, and thank you so much.